Joining us now, Harvard legal scholar Lawrence Tribe, author of To End a Presidency, The Power of Impeachment. Professor Tribe, I want to read something that you tweeted today I saw. You said, quote, Mr. Trump's public confession last night, all but daring the attorney general to seek a grand jury indictment against him for seditious conspiracy and for giving aid and comfort to an insurrection to, quote, overturn the election is the last straw. The government must call his bluff, end quote. What do you mean call his bluff? I mean, indict him. There's no more confession that we could expect, no clearer admission of guilt than the one that he said out loud. He said that it was his purpose to overturn the election, that he had the right to do that, that he has the right to pardon people who were insurrectionists. He's offering them pardons in the future. He's threatening those who go after him. He's laid down the gauntlet. And if in the face of all of that, the United States Department of Justice, whose Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco announced several days ago that they were investigating not only the insurrection, but the plot to have fake electors. Having said that, if the Department of Justice simply turns the other way, if the Attorney General, who said we will follow the evidence where it leads, turns the other way now, it will essentially give him a red carpet to waltz into the White House with a new coup and, if necessary, a violent insurrection. This cannot be tolerated. As you said, Anderson, he says the quiet part out loud. He's done it before, but before we could look the other way, we could say, well, he's not really going to shoot someone on Fifth Avenue. But this time we know what he's planning to do. We know what he's already done. We know what almost succeeded. We know what he's threatening to do. If we care about this country, about saving it from someone who really asserts the divine right of kings to rule over all of us, we must indict him. There's no longer any need to dot the I's, cross the T's, follow the evidence where it leads. The evidence has led us to the Rubicon, and we must now cross it. It, it is remarkable when you think of the fact that this president stood in front, you know, encouraged a, a mobs of people to come to Washington, D.C., on January 6th to do something and it's going to be wild and told them to march on the Capitol that he's now telling saying he wants mobs to appear in cities throughout the United States where anybody is daring to actually just investigate him according to the law that I mean it's he's basically threatening the police he's threatening the FBI He's threatening the Department of Justice. What more do we need? For heaven's sake, you know, the January 6th committee has put it all together. As Jamie Raskin said just yesterday, I think, we don't any longer need to look for the smoking gun. It's right in front of us. What is he going to say? You didn't give me any Miranda warnings before I confessed on national, uh, on national television in Texas? before I issued a public statement saying it was my intention to overturn the election in a statement he issued the day after. He doesn't need Miranda warnings. He's confessed. It's a voluntary, open confession. And what I'm afraid of is people are going to say, geez, it can't be that bad if he's willing to admit it. That's ridiculous. He's admitted that he tried to overturn the government of the United States. He's admitted that he is going to pardon, if he gets into office, the people who, when that plot failed, stormed the Capitol, injured and killed people, smeared the walls with feces, carried Confederate flags through the Capitol in a way that wasn't done even in the Civil War, tried to crush people to death, threatened to hang the vice president, said, Nancy Pelosi, where are you? They were looking to kill the Speaker of the House. We have to wake up. He has said the quiet part out loud, and the quiet part is, I'm going to take over. If I don't win the fair way, whatever that might be, I'm going to take over. He's obviously going to claim that he won the next election, whether he wins or loses. He's putting a 
a parachics in place throughout the country to count the votes in his favor, whether they go that way or not. He's encouraging state legislatures to send Trump slates or the slates of whatever Trump substitute might run for president next time, even from states where he loses. This is extremely serious. No former president has ever committed so grave a crime against the country right in front of our very eyes. The crime of seditious conspiracy and aiding and comforting an insurrection that he himself fomented, and he's threatened to do it again. I don't think we can afford to wait, and I'm waiting to see what the Attorney General of the United States will do now. Should the Attorney General, who I think, was he a student of yours at one point? Yes, Merrick Garland was a wonderful student, and I believe he has a spine. I believe that he is not going to let this former president threaten him and say, come and get me, I dare you, make my day. That's what he's saying. And if in the face of that, the evidence that is in front of all of us does not lead, not simply to following the breadcrumbs up the path, but actually bringing an indictment through the grand jury that is now sitting in Washington, effectively the attorney general will have been saying something that I don't think Merrick Garland wants to say, and that is he's being influenced by politics and by threats. We don't negotiate with terrorists. We certainly don't lay down in front of them and let them walk all over us. And this is domestic terrorism that he's threatening. He's saying, I'll do the coup all over again, and if it has to get violent, it'll get violent. Let me just ask you, I mean, if huh? is it should the Attorney General of the United States take into account potential ramifications of charging a former president with something. I mean, it, 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 in this country, the idea of, you know, one party uh, in power and the attorney general uh, investigating a former president, that raises all sorts, uh, many people will see that as political, might see that as political. Should the attorney general take that into account? Well, it's politics either way. He should certainly should take into account the fact that if he does not pursue the evidence that is now in front of us, that will be transparently political and cowardly. Yes, of course, it is not a routine thing to charge a former president. It's also not a routine thing to have a former president who openly confesses that he tried to overturn the election in which he lost. It's not a common thing for us to have a former president who wants to turn this into a dictatorship. That's what's unusual. Of course, we don't want to go after somebody for vindictive reasons. That's not the point. The point is to hold him accountable so that he doesn't do it again. And only convicting him of aid and comfort to an insurrection would disqualify him from ever running again. Lawrence Tribe, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Anderson.